Okay, by now, you've heard me talk about it, you've seen my other video, uh, you've seen me talk about it on the forum as possibly, <clears throat> but Hobby King released a new fly bar controller. This is called FUBAR. Now, the nice thing about FUBAR is, this is a Mikado Mini V-Bar clone. And when I say it's a clone, I mean it's 100% mini blue line V-Bar clone. All the bank switching, uh, the governor, the pro software on this, um, everything is V-Bar. It sets up just like V-Bar, has two SAT ports on it, supports everything. The only thing missing from this, on top, on a regular mini V-Bar, there is a four pin connector for hooking up like a Bluetooth module. Okay? Uh, what they did, and I'll get out another one here in a minute. I use one SAT on a 450, always have, it's nothing. Uh, in case you're interested, as you can see, that's my SAT holder, my boom mount, it's SAT holder. It actually is a boom mount. I make those now. Um, but anyway, back to this. This is a mini V-Bar. The connector that you connect up to, and they give you a USB cable to do this with, it's right there. That is a 4-pin mini B connector. It's an old-style USB connector. Um, when I say old-style, some of the old citizens... Uh, receipt printers had it on it uh, the old toy cameras used to get it like Walmart or Kmart or somewhere like that that the kids would plug into a computer it that was the connector it had on it uh, I don't know why they went with that style connector but they did I really wished it would have been on top because with it being there it does limit the way you can mount this thing to some degree if you want to access this port luckily for me on this TS, well, now they call it a TB. When it first came out, they called it a TS frame 450 Pro. Um, it worked out because the plate is bigger. The servo mounts there, and I just I just shifted the gyro over to the, end of the plate, and it gave me access because there's a hole in it right there that I can stick the cable through and get right to it. Uh, you know, I got lucky. But anyway, the four pins it's missing are for the Bluetooth. This is a four pin connector. Well, guess what? If you can get a hold of a mini B, which that's what that is right there. That's a four pin mini B. If you can get a hold of one of those, cut it about, you know, as long as you need, but okay. This is a one of those eight to ten dollar blue eBay Bluetooth adapters. On the back, it's labeled, and I'm sorry, I got the flash on. The light down here is bad, but um, they're labeled on the back, as you can see, what the pins are on this thing. So, you just uh, set that up, and it will uh, work. I haven't, I mean, I just did this last night, testing it and it does work I'll clean it up I'll make that usable now if you can't find one let me go over here to my little box of goodies one of my little box of goodies here's another one I ordered two of them because I got them when they were fifty dollars instead of sixty it comes in a box like this this is all you get with it you get this USB cable which all this dongle is it's a USB to serial that's all it is um, there it is right there so going forward we'll use this one we'll move the helicopter out of the way because it'll be easier to do so and you get a bag with adhesive and the, cert the receiver cables if you want to do it that way so anyway the connector is a 4 pin mini B You can take the end of this cable back to about, I don't know, usually 
10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 110, 120 millimeters, and cut it off. Then strip it back about three centimeters, and then strip each separate wire. And the trick with this is, and I don't know why this is or why it came out that way, you can actually plug the end into the foobar and then use a multimeter and check for power when you read the same power that's coming out of your uh, that's powering your electronics I set it for 5 volts because these are only rated for like up to 6 this is a HV setup but I just lowered the voltage until I can get one of these with a voltage regulator in it I have one on the way now so you cut this off you strip the wires back you can plug this into here and you can either solder this right to the Bluetooth adapter or add a connector onto here, any four pin connector or two two pin connectors and just color the two different colors so you know which one goes to which. So you can actually plug them back up and use the USB cable if you want to. That's all that is. Okay. Once you're past that, you can start using this. Um, the same tricks for doing this with V-Bar is the same as doing it with the V-Bar and the eBay Bluetooth module. When you connect this up to the computer, or when you when you hook this up, if you haven't renamed the module, this one comes up as uh, Linksnore, I think. And you can connect to the computer with it, and then you have to go to the properties and rename it to V-Bar, just V-B-A-R. And once you do that, you load the VBAR Bluetooth software. It's the same software, just a Bluetooth version. Click on the little BT at the top for Bluetooth. It'll scan for it, and when it finds the VBAR, click, it'll automatically connect, and then you're good to go. And you're doing everything without plugging in straight to the computer. The nice thing with this is you can actually hook one of these up to your fly barless controller, leave it hooked up. There is a Bluetooth app for Droid devices, so you can tweak this thing while you're at the field without needing a laptop or anything else. I've been doing this with my V-Bars for a couple of years. It's it's a great option, okay? And the Bluetooth software for the Droids, it does not phone home. I mean, I, I checked it. I downloaded a new copy the other night on my new phone, and it hasn't been updated in over a year, so it doesn't phone home. Not yet, anyway. I actually think it's made by a third party. Someone that has V-Bar made it. So it probably won't ever phone home unless V-Bar buys out the rights and sets it up. But anyway, this is a Bluetooth for a FUBAR. I mean, that was the only thing we were missing on it. I have flown this today several times and yesterday several times. Uh, this is a stretched 480, by the way. I got 345 millimeter blades on it. I don't know if you can actually, no, uh, there they are. 345 millimeter blades. I have uh, a 480 millimeter boom on it. It flies nice. I mean, it's, you know, the new KDE motor, that's the 1750. 6S, of course. But, I had to try one of these. I'm big on buying, you know, something that doesn't cost a lot of money, testing it out. So anybody that might want one but's leery about it, they don't waste their money. I know a lot of people don't have money to waste in this hobby. It can get expensive. Yeah, that's another pro I've got sitting there. I've just got to put the tail boom holder back in it and put the boom assembly on it and the skids on it, and that one's actually ready to fly. i got a new head for it. I went ahead and I'm converting that to DFC. So, but if you're thinking about a fly wireless controller, that's it right there. I mean, they're now $60. And I can tell you, I've flown everything out there. My 600 right now has a full size blue line V bar on it. It will not ever come off that helicopter. I mean, it'll stay on there to the day it quits working. I've got it tweaked and set up perfect, and you couldn't ask for a better flying machine. You know, I've turned the gains up on this one today. I'm going to turn the gains up on the tail just a little bit more 
and this one will be done. It was really nice. I had it out today, and it was a rocket. I mean, I'm, I'm running 14 negative, 14 positive on the head. It's a 6S setup. Uh, I need to turn the head speed down a little bit. I'm still running at 3200. Actually, 3250. And I look to 31 in 3125 in idle one. That was for the standard 450 blades, the 325 millimeters. Then I've gone to the bigger ones. I probably need to turn it down just a hair. It turns them. It doesn't have any problems. Even on 14 degrees with this motor, I mean, it's a rocket. It shoots straight into the air. It does wear my batteries down pretty quick, though. So I'm thinking if I lower my head speed a few hundred RPMs, I mean, with 14 degrees, I'll still have everything I need. So anyway, if you're looking for a fly wireless controller, wondering about this thing, you know, curious as to, you know, if you can get a Bluetooth on it, you can. It's just this simple. I mean, that's all it is, okay? And if you look at this for whatever reason, like I was at earlier, the black wire is actually the positive. The green wire is actually the ground. Uh, the white wire is the transmit, and the red wire is the receive. So VCC is black. Ground is green. Uh, TX is white, and RX is red. From what I've seen, that holds pretty true with all of them. I actually have a Spartan Blue Link coming. It's a Class 1. This is a Class 2, which means this thing's good for about 30 feet because it's Class 2. A Class 1 is good for 100 meters, roughly 300 feet. Uh, it's also got a voltage regulator built in, so it'll work with the high voltage. Uh, you can get them on, at Spartan's... Uh, online store in the clearance section they're 50 bucks because they're phasing them out uh, v-bar released a new bluetooth which i think it's class one and they're 120 dollars which is what the blue link i believe was so for 50 dollars us it says when you go to order it with the shipping and all it was like 33 pounds but it came out to like 50 dollars us so I figured, you know, for a 100 meter range on the Bluetooth, I can use the, vi the vibration analyzer in this while I'm flying and know exactly what's going on. So it's what I'm doing. You can get a Class 2 Bluetooth module probably on eBay for $15, $20. Do the mod yourself. It's your choice. But that's all I got for now. Thank you for watching.